Hi everyone and welcome back to the Beginners Free CAD series for version 1. Lots are generated by interpolating a surface between profiles using splines. These splines originate from the vertices of the profiles and align with them. If these profiles are created from a sketch, the points within the geometry will determine the vertices. It is essential to understand how the placement of these vertices influences the resulting interpolated shape. Let's explore the concept of creating a simple loft in the PAR design. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I've opened up FreeCAD and I've started a new document. We're in the part design. I'm going to create a new body and then a new sketch. I'll place this along the YZ plane. We'll create our first profile. It's going to be a simple square equal sides, just right click to cancel the tool and set both of these equal and then I'm going to select top left point, bottom right point and then the center point and use the symmetrical, great symmetry across there. That sets in size, For this one I'm going to use the dimension and set this to 100 millimeters. We have our sketch at 100 millimeters. Hit close. Our sketch is sitting there. I'm going to show you the center axis. Right to view and toggle axis cross. Just to show where the center of the 3D view is. I'm now going to take that sketch and create two copies of it. Want to edit and duplicate selected object. We may have auto select dependent objects checked. Uncheck that and then uncheck the YZ plane. We only want to copy the sketch. We don't need another plane. Let's hit OK. We've got the second copy of our sketch. We'll come down to the attachment offset, which is on the data tab. We'll look at the position. I'm going to position them along the Z axis at 100 millimeters. Let's create another copy. That sketch, edit, duplicate selection, Uncheck the YZ plane and hit OK. Now position this one again along the Z axis at 200 millimeters. We have our three sketches. These are our profiles that we're going to loft through. If I look at them from the front, we can see they're in line. We'll raise the center profile up at position along the Y axis by 25 mil and click off. So we've created some elevation. That's loft through these profiles. So you'll see that I apply a loft in a certain way. There are a number of ways to apply lofts to your projects. The easiest way is to take your profiles and select them in the order that you want the loft to apply. So the first profile, control select the second profile, and then the third profile from the tree view, and then apply the additive loft. And that will loft all the way through there. Or we can select them from the screen while we're in the 3D view. Select one, control select the other, and then your last one, and then apply the loft. Then your loft is applied. We will be applying it step by step. So for that, we select the first profile, add a loft and then click Add Section. And then we can select the sections from the 3D view. So add Section again and add the next one, like so. So we get the loft going through here. Another way to add the loft, cancel that, is to pick the first one, first profile, create the loft, and then add section and select them from the tree view. So the next one, if I hover over it, you can see it's in yellow on the screen. The trouble with this is when we add the section, we have to go back and forth, the task tab and the model tab. What we can do is take the task tab, 
click and hold and drag it to the right. And what we've got to do is bring it right over and dock it to the right hand side. You see the fly out, so we can dock it in there. Release. And then we can work on the task, add section, the model, and back and forth. And hit OK. This split screen setup is quite handy because we can be, for example, in the additive loft and we can work with both the task and the model itself. So I can come into the model and select a one of the sections and come down and look at the data tab and change, say it's attachment. Position 25 along the X at the moment. I can set this to say 10. Click off. See nothing's recomputed at the moment. We've got the refresh and we can click that and our loft recomputes. So we can edit between parameters and the model tab together. Makes our workflow a lot more flexible. Bring the task panel back. We hover over it, click and hold and drag it. And we get this blue box. Now the idea, if we dropped it just in here, it would sit at the top. So we drag it out and what we're looking for, drag over. And if we move down, sometimes it's a bit tricky is to highlight this whole section. So you can see the whole section here is highlighted, the model and the bottom part as well, where those tabs are down the bottom. We release, those tabs are now together and we can click and hold and drag the tab into position of what we want. If we didn't do that, we would have to flip back and forth. So I want to bring this sketch back up to the next position. 25. Refresh and then come back to the task and hit OK to apply the loft. Let's examine the profiles. Let's come into the added loft and select the first sketch. And using the shift, select the last. They're all selected and press the spacebar. See the profiles within. I'm also going to select the loft and right click and toggle the transparency. We can see through and see what's going on inside. Let's rotate the center profile and add some twist to it. Let the center profile, see it highlighted in green, come down to the attachment offset and the angle. Let's set this to 45 degrees. Let's watch what happens to the edges. We click off, our shape is now twisted. The B spline interpolation is now going through the points at where they lay. This one is now at 45 degrees, twisting the shape. Let's change the profile within. To come into that sketch, double click it. Remember, this has some offset that's been pushed up. Let's quickly change that by coming over to the model tab, clicking on that sketch. Looking at the position and setting the Y to zero. So they're all in line. Going to task and hit close. We can see the shape that's been created. So if I change this sketch and remove the rectangle, I click and drag in, bring a selection around it and hit and delete on the keyboard. This time add in a circle using the center point and coming out, hit escape, we won't bother constraining it. Let's place it about here and hit close. We see that we get transition between the shape, but our twist has been removed. So we've got a square transition into a circle and then back to another square. Let's right click and toggle transparency so we can see it there. So what's happened to our twist? Well, if we look at the circle, click on the loft, press the space bar, we can see it's only got one vertex, where the other profiles have got four. When we create a loft through profiles, the number of edges of that loft are matched to the number of vertices. As the circle has only one vertex, then additional vertices are created on the circle. 
to equal the highest vertex count. FreeCAD doesn't know that we're looking for a twisted shape, though this profile has been rotated. To force the twist with a circle, we will come into the middle profile and match the amount of vertices in the other profiles. The highest vertex count is four or square. We have to match that. Vertex placement is crucial here. If I want the twist, then I have to figure out where this twist lies. So for me, I click on the right and that's straighten this. Actually, let's use the tool at the top. View sketch to add a vertex. We use the split tool. And this is available from the toolbar. Split edge. Also available from sketch. Sketch tools and split edge. And I'm going to split in between the vertices of the square. So here, two, three, and four. So now when we close this and look back at additive loft, press the space bar, we get the twist we need. You can see that twist in there. And if I hide that loft again, you can see the vertices in the circle equal four. How the vertices align across profiles is critical when creating the desired shape. For instance, in this example, we can see we have nice flow between the vertices and the number of vertices is consistent across each of the profiles. Looking at this in wireframe mode, we can see how the edges flow from one vertex to another. Let's take a look at the other loft. Straight away, you can see a problem. We can see how the shape doesn't flow and we get a number of bulges and the solid is misshapen as the loft is applied to the profiles. If we look at this in wireframe, we can see what's happening. We have an insistent count across the profiles and the points are misaligned. You can see our vertex has been created with this edge here. And this has been calculated because there's an additional vertex in this profile. Recad has tried to make a best guess at creating the surface between. Let's return to our previous model and look at the rotation of profiles in more detail. What I'm going to do is come into the sketch in the middle and set this back to a square. Click and drag a selection around it and hit delete. Let's come back to the model, select the sketch, come to the data tab and find the attachment offset and look at the angle and set this back to zero. Come back to task so we're in the sketcher and we use the view sketch to orientate ourselves correctly. Now we can add square in here. Hit escape or right mouse button to get the points back. And we'll set the points, let's in the top points, let's in the bottom point and the middle. Use the symmetry and then set the side along with the top as equal. The dimension is 100 millimeters. Hit enter, and that's close. And now I've got the loft going across those profiles. Let's add rotation to the center sketch. Clicking on the center sketch, and change the angle back to 45 degrees. And hit enter. Let's add some twist to this one as well. Let the last sketch and change the angle to 90 degrees and click off. We now get a full twist. Let's change the distance away from these profiles. At the moment, if I select on one, the middle one, 
The distance in the attachment offset along the position is 100 millimeters. I'm going to add 25 millimeters on the end of this. So add 25, we can do maths in here. Let's hit enter. Then I'm going to do the same with the end one, this one here. That is 200, let's add 25 onto the end. Notice that the twist is still applied. Let's add a bit more to this. So take the middle sketch. Let's add 50 onto the end. And do the same with the end sketch. At the moment it's 225 plus 50. We see that the loft has changed. There is no longer a twist. And this is due to the B spline interpolation. Even if I come in and add another 25 on here, we can see it's not changing at all. To fix this, we would create another profile. So I'm going to take front profile, come out to edit and duplicate selection. Make sure the auto select dependent object is unchecked and uncheck the YZ plane and hit OK. So now we have another sketch. I can double click the additive loft, hit add section and add that sketch in. I haven't moved it yet. It's going to look a bit odd. Should have really moved it first, but that's select sketch. Remember, we're still in lofting mode. We have an OK that at the moment. Let's change the position. We're looking along the z-axis and we'll set this 50. The angle, let's set this to 45 divided by two. Hit enter. We see nothing's changed at the moment. That's because we are still in the lofting process. If we hit the refresh, that will refresh our loft. Profile at the moment is still the end profile. We can see sketch three is sitting there. We take sketch three and drag it into the correct position. Remember the first one is sketch one. We're dragging it to the top. We can see we've got that in the correct position now. The last one, our last sketch we copied was renamed to sketch three. We've got sketch three, one and two. And that's hit okay. Now we've got the twist that we're looking for. So the additive loft, we have the first sketch, this one here. The second sketch, sketch three, which is this one. Sketch one, this one, and sketch two, our last one. You can see we've maintained that twist now. All through adding another profile. Altering our second profile, press the space bar, and also look at our other profile here, we can position this in the right place. So the position, let's add 25 onto the end of that. Get it into the correct position. So we can see the profile placement is important to get the correct shape that we want. And that's all because of that B-spline interpolation. In our next lesson, we'll create this part. This is often used in CAD exercises. It's known as the twisted part. There are many ways of creating this part. And on my channel, I've covered a number of them in the past. In this lesson, we'll understand how to create this with lofts. So I hope you're enjoying this course and I hope to see you in the next lesson. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.